Okay, so I recently saw a video on the Mandelbrot set, and I thought it would be kind of cool to make it in Desmos. So I'll just be going over my thought process for when I was first creating this graph, along with some of the math behind it. So let's just get straight into it. First, we are going to be using the complex plane. This makes it easier to work with points as values. Um, in this video, I'm going to assume that you already understand the complex plane and what complex numbers are. Okay, so now let's get into it. First, let's look at the advantages of using a complex number as a point. It's a variable like a equals 2 plus 3i. This is just arbitrary. It doesn't really matter. That's for the purpose of explanation. Um, as you can see, a point comes up. But this is only one number. See, normally on a Cartesian plane, we need two points to define two uh, numbers to define a point. But for this, we only have one value. While this might look like well, it's just the same thing, there are some really cool things we can do this do with this. Like we can square the point. Not squaring an x value. We're not squaring the y value. We are squaring the point itself, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, so now let's imagine a scenario where we have a unit circle. So, let's zoom in, and we have a point A, let's just have a zero, and we have a point C. Make a little zoom. Oh no. Point 4, 8 plus point 4, 5, I. Um, now let's write a function, f of a and c equals a squared plus c, and then a goes to f of a and c. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to square a, then add c to a. Now we're going to square a again, add c to a. So square a, add c to a, and do it again and again and again. Uh, as you can say, a just goes to infinity. Let's try this with a new c value. What about here? Okay, so for this, as you can see, a stays within the unit circle. Let's try one more point. Let's try c equals here. Again, as you can see, a stays within the unit circle. Basically, what the Mandelbrot set is, is a collection of all of the points C for which A stays within the circle. So how in the world do we model that in Desmos? So first we're going to have to change this up because you can't have iterative recursions in one line equations and in the end we want to have this in just one big equation. Instead, we're going to have a function where it's like f of f of f of f of f of x equals the function, so we'll call it like f20 of a and c equals f of 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 blah 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 a and c. So this point is the exact same as just applying this um, 20 times. So let's graph this. And let's make this point a orange star. So you can see it. Oh shoot. So this shows where point A will be after 20 recursions. See right now it's inside the unit circle. Oh, now it's outside. So that means this point isn't in the Mandelbrot set. Oh, now it's inside. So that means this is in the Mandelbrot set. Okay, now let's check if this is in the unit circle. As you can see, it's graphed at the x-coordinate of the real part and the y-coordinate of the imaginary part. So we can actually extract the x and y coordinates using the Desmos built-in function real. This is the x-coordinate and imaginary. This is a black coordinate. So now we just plug this into the equation x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. We just make this a boolean. 
Okay, so now this is one. That means this point is in the middle of our set. Now it's undefined, so that means it's not. Okay, great. So we're almost there, just one more step. So as you can see right now, we're just dragging around this C value. But what we want to do is check every single X and Y value for if this points will stay inside. So instead of C, we'll have a point at coordinate X plus Y, I. We'll have a coordinate X plus Y, I. So now all we have to do is take this equation, replace C with X plus Y, I. Oops. Replace C with X plus Y, I. As you can already see, it's starting to take shape, and there we have it. This is a Mandelbra set with depth of 20. And you can go ahead and like explore stuff like down here. This one starts rendering it a bit more when you get closer. And you can go ahead and check um, this for yourself. See right now the C value is within the Mandelbra set. So this star stays within the circle. Let's just put it right over the edge, and there goes the star. Oop, there it goes. In the first graph where I made this, I um, added this little thing where I have all the lines showing um, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. This one goes all the way up to F24. You can see them go in and go out. This is a depth of 24. And there's something really cool you can do with different depth Mandelbrots. Um, see right here, I have a depth of 14, a 4, and an 8. As you can see, it gets like more and more um, detail, I guess, which is where you get this visual right here. It just takes a while to load. But this is how Mandelbrots are normally visualized. I have F24, 16, 12, 8, 6, and 4. Make sure to check out the stand up mass video on the Mandelbrot set because he does like a thousand times better job at explaining it than I do. And it's also just a great video in general. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.